So we all know school is very boring and many of the times we forget things that are taught at school or sometimes you do not understand things. So I'm here to make things easier for you at Schoolosophy. So I'm going to talk about topics from grade 1 to grade 10 and I am going to post new videos every week. So for today my topic is from biology that is movement in and out of cells and in that I am going to talk about diffusion. This is a typical animal cell and this is a typical plant cell. Cells are the smallest unit of life and uh, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs and they make up the organisms and we are going to speak about cells in details in another video and today we are going to talk about diffusion. Diffusion is the net movement of particles and ions from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration down the concentration gradient due to the random movement of particles. I know this sounds confusing and so I'm going to explain you this in easy words. So let me tell you, diffusion occurs only in liquids and gases and the reason for this is because the attraction forces are weaker in both liquid and gases and the particles in liquids and gas both have the ability to move around. Uh, liquids in movement in liquids because the particles can slide over each other and in gas because the particles can bounce over each other. Now, diffusion does not occur in solids because as you can see, the particles in a solid are so tightly packed that they hardly have any space to move about. Solids like this board, like this pen, they cannot change shape until external force is applied. So, diffusion does not occur in solids. While it can occur in liquids and gases because see the amount of space the particles have to move about. So concentration is the number of particles in a unit area. So higher concentration means more number of particles. Like in this corner of the room, like it doesn't look like a room, but yes, in this corner of the room, there are more number of particles. So there is higher concentration here. While you can see the rest of the room has less particles in it, which means there is low concentration here. Now diffusion occurs from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration because the particles want to be equally spread and the equilibrium has to be reached like it is reached here in the next side of the room that is after 20 minutes how the room will be like. So diffusion occurs from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Diffusion occurs down the concentration gradient. Now concentration gradient is the difference in the concentration. Like the concentration here might be around 20 and here it is 5. So the concentration gradient is 20 minus 5, that is 15. And diffusion occurs down the concentration gradient, which again means it occurs from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So I'm going to explain examples in diffusion that are occurring in human body. Now the first example is of the lung. Now this is an alveolus, that is a small part of the lung where the gas exchange takes place. Now how does it take place? When you inhale or breathe in, the concentration of oxygen in your lungs is more than the concentration of the oxygen in your blood or in your red blood cells, that is your RBCs. So, oxygen diffuses from the lung into your RBCs. So that equilibrium is reached between your lung and your blood. Now the vice versa happens with carbon dioxide molecules. Because carbon dioxide is a waste product of respiration, it is produced in more amount in the blood than it is there in the lungs. And so, carbon dioxide diffuses out of your blood into your lung, that is from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. And this carbon dioxide is then thrown out of the body uh, when you exhale. So, oxygen diffuses from the lungs into the blood, that is from higher concentration to lower concentration. And carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the lungs, that is from higher concentration to lower concentration. Now, next example is of small intestine. Now, this is a villi. Villi are lying the small intestine and this is a network of capillaries inside the villi. So, this is an amino acid and this is a glucose. After the process of digestion is completed, uh, proteins are broken down into amino acids. That is, amino acids are the smallest part of a protein and chain of amino acids form a protein. And glucose is the smallest part of a carbohydrate. So, the concentration of amino acids and glucose is higher in the lumen of your small intestine than it is in the blood. And so, it diffuses from an area of higher concentration to an area of low concentration, that is from your small intestine to your capillaries, that is into your blood. 
So next I'm going to talk about example of diffusion in plants. This is how the microscopic view of the lowest layer of a leaf would look like. Uh, these are the epidermal cells and this is a guard cell. Now, okay, so you don't need to know these terms for diffusion right now, so don't worry. And now I'm going to talk about the actual example of diffusion that takes place. So plants have a, do a process of photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is a process in which the plants you use light to make food. And the waste product of this process is oxygen and this process needs carbon dioxide. So in plants when photosynthesis occurs the carbon dioxide is used up. So the amount of carbon dioxide outside the plant is more than the amount of carbon dioxide inside the plant. So the concentration of carbon dioxide is more outside and less inside. Therefore, carbon dioxide will diffuse into the cell through the process of diffusion from an area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. Now as I told before, oxygen is a waste product of this process. So there is more concentration of oxygen inside the cell and less concentration of oxygen outside the cell. So oxygen will diffuse from higher concentration that is inside the cell to lower concentration that is outside the cell. That's it for this video. I hope you understood and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments down below. I will post my next video on Thursday and it will be about the factors that affect diffusion. Please do subscribe.